what the hell's going on with Crossfire X? And you might think, wait, what? Is that not that, like, free-to-play shooter that's really big in the East? Huh? Why are we doing this? Ah, you see, Crossfire X has a big single player mm -hmm. that is being developed by none other than Remedy. Yep, Remedy Entertainment, who make the excellent control, among other things. Uh, yeah, control. Max Payne. Alan Wake. Yep. And it's coming out tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> and no one's heard of it? They have forgot to market it? What's going on? Yeah, also, it's a Remedy single player. Uh, it has a multiplayer component as well, but it's hmm. a Remedy single player shooter campaign in a vaguely interesting enough IP, and it's not coming to PC either. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's the point of this video. Yeah. We're going to yeah. work out what the hell's going yeah. on. Microsoft may have kind of taken a great opportunity and bungled it, possibly. Yeah, so, right. Um, this mm -hmm. is going on to Game Pass. Yeah. And it'll be there tomorrow. Now, if you're not aware of the overall situation here, Crossfire is a free-to-play military shooter that released back in 2007. It is developed by Smilegate. Mm -hmm. People may uh, obviously yes. know them. <laughs> yes. Lost Ark. Yeah, Smilegate RPG, a subsection of Smilegate, have just released a game. Just pre-released a game this week to 500,000 concurrent players on Steam and 1.2 million Twitch viewers. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty damn big. Yep. Um, right. Crossfire is humongous in Asia. That essentially is what you need to understand. Um, it's the most popular FPS, or at least mm -hmm. on many points in history, has been the most popular first-person shooter on Earth. Yeah. One billion lifetime registered users. Six million concurrent players as of February 2020. The numbers <laughs> for this game are absolutely humongous. It's just the sort of game you may not have heard of if you are, you know, you're in the West and you're only really playing Western yeah. games. There's more than that, though, because there's actually a Chinese TV drama that is based on this, that uh, brought in, uh, well, it's more than 1.7 billion views between June and October of 2020. Again, none of us have heard of this, yeah. but that's what it did. That's the power of this IP. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe the Halo show does really well. Is it going to do that well? Definitely wow. Not. I mean, th that's the thing where it's like, you look and it's like, I, you know, I don't know how many views Arcane has got, but Arcane took the world by storm very, very quickly and exploded over the course of November last year, and I was like, holy shit, Riot are on top of the world. I don't know if they would have competed with 1.7 billion views. As to whether that number's entirely accurate, that's a different question, but mm -hmm. the same point is like, this stuff's wild. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, if you want like some of the story here, basically it's a big old, it's a big rivalry, it's for another day, but uh, of course you've got Naxon, you've got Smilegate, they are pretty big, uh, you know, they're rivals. Now, Naxon, got the license to do free-to-play Counter-Strike uh, in the Asian markets, mm -hmm. right? So basically Counter-Strike Online. Um, now, instead of trying to fight Nexon in the Korean and South Asian market, Smilegate instead um, went over to China with Crossfire, which of course is their own game. You know, inspired by uh, yeah. Counter-Strike, very inspired by Counter-Strike. Like, <laughs> some people would say it is a form of clone of, mm. um, of Counter-Strike. Never. Um, I'm sure they've maybe done a bit since, but who knows. Anyway, they got this deal with Tencent, which uh, is pretty, you know, pretty massive. Uh, and also pretty much, like, essential for breaking into the Chinese course, market. Yeah. So they got that, uh, that distribution um, deal. Smilegate were bringing in nearly 500 million in revenue in 2014. Crossfire has brought in 12 billion <laughs> lifetime revenue as of 2019. And that does make yeah. it one of the largest gaming IPs. Yeah, and now, of course, this is the opportunity to bring all of that $12 billion lifetime revenue bar over to the West because it's never been on console. Console's exploding, it's a big market here. And it's time for Crossfire X now. Yeah, yeah. So Crossfire X, right. It is basically the console version of Crossfire. Um, essentially, the story is that Smilegate wanted to expand what Crossfire is, and they basically wanted to get it to a larger audience and sort of fill out a narrative for the world. And that is why basically sort of Enhanced Crossfire is coming to the Xbox stuff. Um, so it's it's a funny thing, really, because they're trying to break into a different market that doesn't know about Crossfire. I think if you go to the average Call of Duty player, they have no idea about Crossfire. I think if you go to the average Counter-Strike player, maybe more of them will know, and they'll just think, oh, it's that, like, knockoff of our game that they play over there. Hmm. But I don't think, really, I don't think most people appreciate the sheer scale of Crossfire. Yeah. Um, that said, I do think it's going to struggle a little bit breaking into the market, hmm. just because there's already a very entrenched... Uh, you know, competitor for like in, in Counter-Strike. Yeah. But hitting it up on console, 
that is that's different. Maybe that's why they didn't push PC maybe um as hard with this. Now, partnering with Remedy is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um I mean Remedy doing a an FPS it doesn't different. yeah it doesn't super track for to you know to go for like an online multiplayer realistic military shooter but you know they were looking into developing an fps like as part of their kind of wider ambitions to you know spread out after having success with alan wick and then obviously control but the thing that's really interesting is they didn't just go oh well we'll just farm this shit out we'll just make whatever because it's 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 an established ip we'll do whatever like no, we're going to do something really interesting this, or mm-hmm. we're going to try to at least. And that's why, like, I remember being excited about this when I first heard of this stuff because I can't remember how long ago this was, but they mentioned that, you know, they have their uh, the engine that's for Control, and Control plays pretty well. Like, uh, even on, on PC and on console, it plays pretty nice, a third-person shooter. I think that's 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 the first thing. But also that they're like, yeah, this is inspired by, you know, our, our inspirations going into this are the likes of Resident Evil, the likes of Metal Gear Solid, and you think of Oh, a military kind of thing with Metal Gear Solid influences, a little bit of Resi influences for whatever they're going for. Combine that on top of what they've done with Alan Wake and that kind of, uh, you know, experiential genre, the control stuff they do really, really well. You're like, this is potential to not only, like, not even talk about aping like the $12 billion success again. It has potential to be a big budget game that Remedy get to go wild on and it's super, super fun. I remember being really excited about that. And now it's out tomorrow and they haven't marketed it. Yeah, and it's also a weird way that it's coming out. So basically yeah. there's two chapters of the single player. Uh, the first mm-hmm. chapter is on Game Pass. The second chapter is not on Game Pass. And and the entire thing is $30. Or $25 at launch. So that's, yeah. I mean, certainly that's odd. <laughs> this yeah. whole situation, honestly, is, is really odd. And then when you kind of look at some of the previews... Um, well, people saying, you know, from IGN, being excited uh, based on the bombastic trailers. Sadly, none of that was present during the few chapters we uh, had the opportunity to experience as an early part of this preview. Enemies look and sound generic. They're not particularly smart. Walking right into your bullets if you'd let them. The levels had little visual flair. Uh, you know, not really the visual flair that was in the marketing material. And full of tired tropes, like waiting for a guy to open a door, forced uh, walking so you can be delivered the narrative overcomes. All of those things where maybe you played like the Battlefield 3 single player and was, you know, you're just kind of <laughs> groaning at it. Uh, the gamer, though, saying that it's a decent attempt to bring story to the series and it's got an intriguing tale, but not sure if Remedy's gameplay is good enough to make me want to engage with it. The game equivalent of comfort food, nothing special, but you know what you are getting. And then for digital trends, uh, you know, really kind of similar, right? Uh, for those who missed the days where shooters had loads of firefights and little to say, it should satiate the hunger, even if it lacks personality thus far. A fast-paced game with snappy gunplay, promising action sequences, and intriguing intersecting story. So it seems like there's a bit of remedy flair, but overall... Yeah. But also it's on Game Pass, so we can try it for free to, yeah, to find so, out ourselves. Yeah, so this actually is... Well, not for free, but yeah, we already yeah. have it. Yeah, so this is actually interesting because I had an experience with almost the exact same... You know, it's a very different situation, but it, you know, there's some significant overlap points where... Do you remember Bright Memory Infinite? You know the game... Okay, well... Um, nope. This was, I can't remember which year it was, but it was the Game Awards a couple of years back. It was around the time the Xbox, uh, I'd say the Xbox One's launching, not that far back, um, but the Xbox Series stuff was launching and they were like, they had, you know, whatever they had to market it, they threw at it because they didn't have Halo because that had already been, uh, you know, uh, bunted back. And it was this game by a solo Chinese developer and it looked really pretty. It seemed to have all these great action scenes and they demoed it with the scene with the main, main character getting into a car and there's a big action sequence. And then, because that that was like, okay, here's big Microsoft marketing for this really good looking you know, shootery action game. Seems to be a little bit away from what they usually do, but they're putting the weight behind it. And then one day they just stopped. No one ever mentioned Bright Memory Infinite ever again. Mm. It released, no one cared, no one talked about it. And I think that's where the parallels of Crossfire are worrying, because I played Bright Memory Infin- Infinite over the weekend. Because if you bought the original Bright Memory, which was like a one demo level, uh, it cost like two quid or three quid or something like that. Then you got the full Bright Memory Infinite for free. Wow. And I can see why Microsoft completely pulled all marketing at uh, what seemed to be the 11th hour for it because it was not very good. It was a commendable effort from a solo dev, 
but as an experience that was supposed to sell next gen, definitely not. It was pretty, but it was really messily designed. Had some soul to it, but it was just fairly generic and fairly pointless. And I, I remember finishing going, I'm happy I played that, but I'm also kind of angry that I wasted my time on it because it was so pretty designed overall. Yeah. And I finished in like two hours, which is, you know, not what you want to have your flagship thing in. And so I, I'm, that's what I'm worrying about here with Crossfire X. I feel like they did market it. They did show it off a lot. Maybe not massively, but it was a core. It was like at a lot of award shows and stuff like that being shown, but like trailers and stuff. But then they just kind of, here it is. It's released. Uh, yeah, that, that's the bit that's confusing me. And... You know, I maybe have to wonder, like, they, they give it that big spot and perhaps mm -hmm. they find they just don't get that much traction. Maybe. Because, you know, they're trying to show off a game experience like that in the West, and I think a lot of people are going to think, like, well, okay, but we have Call of Duty. Mm. You know, we don't, we, I don't care. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if that's been a lot of people's response, which is maybe prompted to this bizarre release of Crossfire X, where, like, yes, they have marketed it, Mm -hmm. It just doesn't feel like it's had a massive campaign. Yeah, it clearly Like, has. it's really like, caught on. Yeah. Um, and I think that combined with lukewarm previews, mm -hmm. well, perhaps the lukewarm previews are part of what kind of informed Microsoft's decision-making. Like, if you have something that's going to be middling, do you really want to put a big microscope on it by mm -hmm. putting all of your marketing money in? <laughs> yeah. So, it's very strange. Now, I guess there's then also, like, will the shooter side of it actually catch on? And it's kind of weird. I, I suppose we'll need to see how the shooter bit actually plays because you think of a Counter-Strike-like game being on console and you just think, no, well, <laughs> no thanks. that doesn't work without a mouse. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's going to have to be different for console. And then when you try to take a game format like that and make it different, do you just end up with Call of Duty? Mm. Which people already know and already play. Yeah. And is tied into the Warzone uh, ecosystem and has a big new thing every year that recently has ran into issues but uh, yeah i don't know it, it just seems like an odd situation of like the positioning of a game within a market they're clearly trying to break in i just don't know if it's going to make much of a dent yeah that's that's the overarching feeling to me and i feel like uh, a lot of what kind of prompted us to talk about it i think is the fact that they just it seems like they had all the potential in the world and they just weren't able to capitalize on it and I'd love to see, you know, I'd love to hear from people who worked on it or, you know, even like a postmortem from Remedy. Because obviously Remedy have other projects in the works and they have, um, was it Alan Wake they recently said they were working on? The next one? So I wonder if this is a case where they kind of did this on the side for a bit of money and didn't put all of their effort into it. And that's why the previews are making it feel a little bit kind of bland as opposed to with the full weight of what I expect that. Because that's, that's a really unique studio and how they do things. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm generally a bit mixed on control as an overall game. Uh, but I really loved like that unique flavor they brought and I was hoping it would be in Crossfire X because that's something that I think we're largely missing in the military shooter which is uh, you know more than set pieces we're missing like a kind of here's a unique uh, experiential kind of take on things the numbers Mason yeah I mean that's the thing that's the closest we kind of got well I guess Titanfall 2 as well towards, sort of towards the end yeah, but there like, has been good stuff there and even yeah. like even the recent Black Ops tied with a few interesting ideas mm. it's just it it I mean, if you know how that game was actually developed, basically that campaign was a big cobble together rush job. <laughs> and I think they did pretty much as good a job as they could, I, given I their circumstances. Yeah. Um, and obviously Black Ops does have its own, you know, it's not perfect, yeah. but it had some of those more interesting ideas yeah. and was playing around with those narrative devices. Yeah, like for how- and That's what you would want Remedy to do. Yeah, for how awkward it was, I really liked Black Ops 3. That whole like Dark Forest, Black Forest thing they had going on. I thought that was really, you know, kind of evoked a little bit of the Titanfall stuff, some of the, like, some of the Black Ops. I was like, that's really cool. This is way better than shoot some dudes. It's weird. I liked that. Yeah. I liked it, like, gameplay and level-wise. Yeah. I just didn't like the story. Oh, yeah, same. same. So the story sucked, but it <laughs> yeah. had those cool ideas. Yeah, it was fun to play. It was interesting, yeah. But again, I think Black Ops 3 was actually one another one of the Black Ops games that had mm -hmm. uh, a pretty troubled development. Yeah. I think actually most of them beyond the second Black Ops... They've actually had pretty ambitious ideas of what they wanted to do with their campaigns. Yeah. Um, but then uh, they, they've just ended up being sort of cut down in development. Yeah, so I think of what we've come to is there is a massive, like, or a decently sized hole in the market for substantially more interesting single player shooters. And it's just kind of, occasionally it'll be magically filled by something like Titanfall 2. Mm -hmm. But ultimately it's like it's not anyone's focus. And this would have been a perfect example to go, listen, here's Remedy in a shooter. This shit's going to be actually, you know, it's going to awaken people who play games for shooty, shooty bang 
into the fact that there's really cool ultimate experiences you can have here. Yeah. And it seems to just kind of... Be it, be it on the publisher side, be it on the developer, developer side, be it on Xbox side for being involved, it's just not gone very well. Aye. So, basically, that's that. Mm. Look, that's just the preview event. Maybe some of Remedy's better ideas yeah. will come in in that second chapter Maybe. or in the content that wasn't previewed. But certainly an odd situation. Yeah. Thankfully, though, we're not going to have to wait long until those reviews are out because Indeed. tomorrow we'll bring that. So, Indeed. I suppose... We'll find out then. Um, mm. I wonder, was this game much in your radar? So let us know. Kind of fell off ours, to be honest. For sure, yeah. Um, and yeah, with that, we'll see you next time.